if you've been with us before, welcome back. Uh, a little bit different to what we quite often do. Uh, you'll have to bear with me while I'm checking on the telephone. Just I just go through a few checks just to make sure everything's working properly. Yeah, we've got a competition. A college in South Wales and a beautiful design done by uh, Jasper. A worthy competition winner. And um, we're demonstrating making the spoon. So, um, here it is, as you can see in the vise. Um, just to introduce it as well, uh, my name is David Thomas. Uh, they also refer to me as Die Love Spoons. And what you're seeing now is a live stream from our family workshop, the Love Spoon Workshop in West Wales. And so what we're gonna do, we're gonna demonstrate the carving of this design. Um, yeah, there's some beautiful elements to it. So we've got these hearts at the top, the eternity sign, you've got the horseshoe, and of course with the love spoon, you'll see a few behind me with love spoons, they have all sorts of stories and messages to them. Uh, as we go through the process as well of making the spoons, if anybody's got any questions, if you've got any comments as well, uh, let me know, and uh, it'll be great, yeah, it'd be great to hear from you. Oh, we've got Mark joining us, hello Mark, and hello to the wood-burning warrior. Long time, yeah, we haven't heard from you for a while, but hope all is well, and uh, thanks for joining us, and uh, anybody who hasn't seen your channel, well worth checking out. Right, let's just have a little look. Hey, we got Jasper with us. That's your spoon, it is indeed. Yeah, you did a great job. Congratulations, well done, worthy winner. Um, yeah, you've got, a, you've got a future there for doing some love spoon designing. Um, so hopefully showing you how to, to make it as well. Um, hopefully it'll be of interest, but yeah, you did a great job on it. It's a, a, a lovely idea, a, a, lovely, um, a lovely design. So the first thing we will explain is how we get to this stage here. Um, and what we do to get to here, you have to start off with a design we made a few minor alterations just to make it a little bit easier to make and a little bit more practical in wood. We got, we got in the background here, we got Yelly having a little look because we're looking. We've got the design, um, the original one. So yeah, if we can get that, we'll show everyone. We've only made a few little changes and the main changes that we had to make to the, the de design is to just make it a little bit stronger um, which makes it then easier for us to make and just a little bit more practical in wood. So from there, as you can see, we stick the design down onto the wood itself, okay? And um, so you transfer it directly on there and we drill pilot holes. Now years ago, when we first started, back in the 60s and 70s, we would have used a wheel brace to, to do those, and so we'd have drilled it by hand. Now we use a pillar drill, so you're using the pillar drill to drill holes down into the wood, and then afterwards we can use that to do uh, what we refer to as our pierce work, so cutting out all of the gaps in the design, and that then means uh, we can feed our scroll saw blade in it and we can cut out all of those gaps. So that is how we get to this stage, is using a combination of different equipment. And uh, years ago, again, we would have used a coping saw. So that one there, that's our coping saw. So you can see that one there. Uh, nearly, but it was the original one that I was looking for, but it's, it's not quite, uh, but there we are. Uh, so yeah, but as we go through the process, any questions, give us a shout and we know, it's fine, it's fine for now, there we are. Uh, right, let's have a little look. Have we missed anything? I'm trying my hand at leatherworking lately. My husband, will... fantastic. Oh, that sounds great. As I said, anybody really interested in all of those things, well worth checking out the Wood Burning Warriors channel. Right, so first part of this process of carving, we're going to focus on the bowl of the spoon. So what we do, we've taken the start of this out using a router and a template. And then from here, we use a gouge to extend it. Now you can do this process, you don't need to do that initial preparation of cutting out using the um, using the, the, the router. All, the only reason I've done that is because it reduces some of the pushing that I have to do. So it just makes life a little bit easier for me. Um, what you can do is you can start from the solid, mark out the shape, mark a line across the center, and then you work to the center. 
So you're working with various different hand gouges and chisels and you just get that shape. Yeah, there we are. There we are, fantastic. We got the design, there it is. That was the original design there. So you can see, we tried to keep it as close as possible to the original. And then, um, there we go. What we've done, we put a little loop on the top. The reason for that, I don't know, is Thomas Woodcarver because everyone can see us today. I've got the other camera going. So if you want to say to, hello to everyone. Yeah, just to show you, I put, I put a little loop over the top. And then the other things that I've done, I made the bow a little bit smaller. So we're looking at those proportions. And then I put a little bit more strength in these areas there. So only very subtle alterations just to make it a little bit stronger and a bit better as well for the carving process. Can we compliment them on the design as well because... Do you want to come round so that if you look, can you see, we're in the bottom corner. I'm showing Tom. So, oh, we got Gabby joining us from Rom Romania as well. Great to have you with us. Right. So if you come and stand, stand there. You okay. can explain to everyone as I carve out the bowl here. You can have the inputs now, Jasper, on your design from Thomas the Woodcarver. Um, how many years have you been carving Love Springs? How many years? Oh dear me, fifty. He started in 1969, so work it out from there. 69, so seven years, 30, 50. It's about 53 years, 54 years, something like that. So yeah, let's have your yeah, thoughts on we, Jasper's we, design. We, well, we really, I think uh, it's great. We're really pleased with it because um, it's number one. It's quite okay. We've made it slightly bigger. But the first thing, symmetry. Yeah, of course, because I'm a kind of like joiner by trade, I, I, I tend to make things uh, symmetrical. Yes. Um, with a love spoon, you don't have to do that. But it's, it's with... Um, oh, Jasper said he, he likes the adjustments, so oh, thank, thank you for that. Oh, good. Um, it, it's, and Well, the thing is with it, that's the first thing. We like the symmetry, and anybody then interested in design and things like that, it's always worth knowing. Um, asymmetrical can be nice as well, but symmetry is... Right, I'm going to get another spoon. It's, a, it's pleasing on the eye, isn't yeah, it? I'm going to get another spoon to show people why, why we like this design. So you can see, already what I'm doing, see, is I'm working on the front shape of the bowl. And for those of you uh, interested in it, this piece of wood that we're working in, this is a piece of oak. But when it comes to love spoons, despite what will be written sometimes, sailors used to carve love spoons, so there's no rules or regs, you can use whatever timber that you want to, because a lot of early love spoons are actually carved from things like teak and mahogany, which are not native timbers. So don't have to restrict yourself if you're going to make love spoons on the wood that you use. No rules or regulations. Right. You're back. Obviously, we, we're, you know, we are competing in the market. Yeah. And so we, we have to... You, You've got, we, we're sort of in between a craft, uh, craft work and artwork. Uh, and people can get uh, more sort of money. Um, I'm not saying everybody, but artwork tends to pull in, depending on what area you're in, that can pull in a lot more money than craft work. Um, you know, this is basically where Thomas Woodcarver's telling you that we're in the wrong business. Well, you know, some <laughs> of the things you look at and you think, is that art? Is, oh, there we are, it's, it's, the, it's the modern art, it's the modern way. But the love spoon can sort of, it, it can cross both um, areas, craft and art. Um, and it's surprising, you know, when you see, well, I mean, Banksy is a good example, when they shredded that, um, piece of wood. Um, you know, it, it's a weird sort of world, the art world, whereas the craft world tends to be a little bit more, we'll say, realistic then. Um, and when, when, we, when we make a love spoon, obviously people send details to us and ask, oh, can you make a, a love spoon for a wedding or for an occasion? Uh, and they give us details of what they want. Yeah. For argument's sake, um, something to represent Wales, something to represent England or Scotland or Ireland or another country. And then we have to put the symbols together. And then um, they, 
don't always give us a budget, <coughs> but uh, obviously um, we have to work out how much is going to cost. You, you are. You're in make. a competitive market, and so your um, well, I mean, a typical example. I mean, <laughs> I presume we're speaking to people from Wales, and um, we, we, the, we we got the college today, so we, yeah, got to okay. Be. Well, I mean, a good example is spending 140 million pounds in Wales on a feasibility study on the M4. So uh, again, back to this. Well, no, it's it's what I'm getting at is that we have we have to be conscious of the market and so when we are given a design we want it to be as, as nice as possible we want to satisfy the customer but we have to be realistic as well because often people will give you a price and you say well we can't put all the things that you were asking for um, for that price and so what I was impressed with this design, when we developed it... He's, he's, he's getting around to it now. Yeah, well it does. It's not something you can answer in a, in a nutshell because we've been at this, I have, for over 40 years. Um, so what was it with the design? Well, to compare, we have this design, if you want to put that on the camera. We put it on that one can for... See, right? Everyone can no, see. That's the design that we have on there. Yeah. Right? That's one that we're working at at the moment. Yeah. And I'm going to count the number of what we would call piercing work. But yeah, this is how we work it out. So if I turn it round, so we're going to have to cut out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, yeah, there's 30 to 40 cuts oh, that will go into that. There's easily 40 cuts. As with this one, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15. So I may be long-winded in what I'm sort of trying to explain, but um, <clears throat> pricing is often done with, with us to the time that it's going to take. To You've make... got the consideration of the timber that people ask you uh, to make a spoon from, you've got the, the price of your timber uh, to, to consider <clears throat> and the availability of timber, but the design itself, you, you obviously want it to look as impressive. It, this as design you can. lends itself, basically, this design lends itself to being reproduced. I'm just going to come in there as well. In my opinion, I firmly believe that the things are made for using. So I always uh, make things that I can use. Yeah, it looks like a wonderful gift for a wedding, so it's a great idea for writing up a wall. Yeah, absolutely. If you can design and make things that have a practical use, we do a lot of that. Um, letter openers, fridge magnets, key rings, all sorts of things um, like that. Anything that can be used, yeah, definitely. Um, if you're looking at designing and you're looking at a craft business, art business, whatever it is, if there is an element where you can use it practically, it is. Oh, yeah. it's, it's a big yeah. advantage yeah. when it comes to sales. But again, that's another angle as, again, uh, really, you know, this particular design, it's, it's quite a, it, it's an elaborate, a reason, you know, compared to most love spoons, it's, I would say it's above average as far as elaborate is concerned. Yeah, it's, it's you, a, you, you've got a horseshoe. Yeah. You, you've got a flower, a eternity sign. You've got uh, a diamond shape in there. You've got two hearts. And of course, you've got the spoon itself. So you've got a lot of features on it. Mark Duggan's put on there, I agree with Thomas. The love spoon is a piece of art. Maybe we need to design a spoon for the WRU. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> I think I think they're going to be. I think they're going to have a, a. They're going to have a new spoon for their collection very yeah. soon. <laughs> There's actually um, they they do do a thing. Um, the WRU um, for anybody under, not understanding right. the WRU, you better the, explain it. Yeah, if you're in America and things like that, it's the Welsh Rugby Union. Um, but yeah, the, the WRU, they do actually do a thing when, when they go on tour, I think they still do it, where they do give a love spoon. 
I've yeah, always... Yeah, no, it's a nonsense thing. It's a large love spoon that's sort of passed around. Isn't well, it? I... It, it, yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm always interested because I'd love to know where that love spoon's actually made. Exactly, it's probably been in Thailand. <laughs> so, yeah, always interested in when, I, when I've seen that one. But, yeah, you're right, Mark. It's a bit of a... It's a bit of a shambles. Yeah. Focusing, though, on this one here, um, what we what we're basically doing to explain the process of carving if you're you know you're new to this so for everybody who's been involved in the designing competition what we're doing here we do what they call stop cuts so that's where you cut down into the woods so this if this is new to you what I've done so far I've carved out that bowl and now I cut down into the wood to create a line and a barrier Okay, so we use that line and we're going to work into that line. So using our different gouges, this is how we'll, we'll sort of build up the design. And with this, we're working in oak, so it gives us a fair amount of resistance. And what we will do, we'll use that line as a barrier and cut into it and start to get the shapes in this particular design. Um, it's a nice process. To explain as well some of the different things we do, we mark out our spoons with a vertical grain. So we don't want a horizontal grain. A couple of reasons for that. If you've got a horizontal grain, so that means go, uh, going across, it's weaker, it's not as strong, the design, and it's more than susceptible to breaking and it's more difficult for us to carve. And what we're working with then, see, we're working with a variety of what we would refer to as fingernail gouges is because they've got like a fingernail shape on the cutting edge and um, these that we're working with a lot of them they're over a hundred years old and that's how we do it and what you'll notice if anybody's going to have a go at wood carving um, it's a lovely process it's a lovely material to work in but we we sort of recommend doing things in a certain way to make it safe so the first thing you see we've secured it in a vice so it's not moving around, but it also means we can get both hands onto the tool and we're always going to be then cutting away from ourselves. I sit to carve, Dad stands to carve. So any, any other thoughts then on design and also on the carving process for those who are thinking of having a go? Yeah, um, I'm getting on a bit now, so I get a bit, it's a bit slower for me to actually uh, remember what I was thinking about. No, no, um, you, you don't worry. It, it's um, when it when it comes to um, it'll come back to me in a minute. <laughs> Any thoughts? On, uh, little tips for wood carving. I still have a few of my father's tools. They're so special to me, and I use them daily. Yeah, brilliant. The, these, yeah, a that's, lot of these, that's, that's over a hundred years old. What you have to bear in mind, from a college point of view, um, you, you know, they they have what we would call. It, I'm sure you have the the um, facility in some, especially technical colleges. They have um, what do we call the um, oh, the uh, the machine scroll saw. No, no, the other one. Scroll saw. The one they use in mid Wales. <clears throat> oh, CNC. CNC, thank you. The CNC machine is, is a machine that once you've got the design of one particular spoon, yeah. you can churn out hundreds quite quickly. Yeah. However, that's, that is the, the sort of difference between um, where, where you're going to go as far as the love spoon is concerned. Yeah. So we, we are in a situation where we design individual spoons for um, people for certain occasions. So and we're basically making one at a time. Exactly. So there is an element there where we the, the price again. We've got to come back to the price. You can you can ask a little bit more for an individual spoon because. We're probably not going to ever repeat that one if it's for somebody individual with a particular feature. Yeah, um, but it takes that much longer to make. Yeah, but this is the this is this is the two important aspects 
Uh, for somebody starting out to make love spoons, which way are you going to go? Ah, yeah, do you go down the mass? Route? Are you going to in that, you know, invest in more machinery, thing. more yeah. equipment, and uh, compete on that market? Or are you going to sort of look at an individual design and, and maybe compete in that market? Uh, and it is a point for... If, if it's a college aspect, it's, it's a point then for debate for them to consider and for the students to see which way they would really want to go. Here we got two flippers joined us from I oh apologies from Ohio. Um, yeah, great to have you with us. Hope all is well. Any questions, any thoughts from anybody as well as we go along, give us a shout. But it's great. Thank you all for joining us. And it brings and us back you, to this you design enjoy. because this design. It, it, it sort of bridges then, um, the, the two aspects where you, you could alter a little bit and, and do a bit of mass production because you've got um, traditional symbols on it. Um, What's well, it? Can, can, I, can I do the sum up for the design? Yeah, by all means. I think the sum up is this. Um, if you brought this design into us, and said, what do you think? Could you put that design in your workshop? Because we make and sell Love Spoons. So all of our spoons, give you our background, everything with us, we, we make on site. And then, you know, we, we either send it, post it out to people, or we sell it in the workshop. If somebody came in with this design, I'd make a few little alterations. And yes, I'd be confident of reproducing this design. And you would have then that ability to sell it. Um, it it's commercially we would just des describe it as being commercially viable so for a, a love spoon designing competition like this yeah fantastic well you know brilliant job you've done really well because it, it would it would be able to do it uh the woodburn one my husband is a CO, cnc but then use it for certain purposes yeah absolutely and and this is what's happened they're, they're using it for things like love spoons um but for ourselves we we've, we've never gone um down, down that route and for those who don't know CNC computer numerical control. So this is something you will see a lot with the um, with, it, with the it, it, it is an important uh, issue and it is an important debate on. That's so that right. Because of, unfortunately, yeah, costing has to come into it at the end of the day. Absolutely. But and this one, it would be definitely be a design that we could work with and that would be viable for for making. Uh, so many people around and seeing the design. I mean, brilliant. I'm glad, I'm glad it is, and it's good. And hopefully it's, it's nice to be able to see how it sort of takes shape. So you can see what I'm actually doing as well. Um, you know, again, anybody who's looking to have a little go at wood carving, there's different ways that you can approach it. So a lot of people, um, and this is more when you're starting out, because I tend to, I tend to almost carve a little bit randomly um, where, um, there's method behind the madness, but I don't tend to do things in a set order. But there are methods, aren't there, when you're starting out. Some people say to have, say, six to ten projects on the go at the same time, where you, you, yeah, know, you can yeah. do a little bit yeah. and go on to another one, and then go on to a, a, a different project. Others, that, other things, other little tips that people say work for them is to start at, say, the bottom of the design and then work to the top or vice versa, working the top to the bottom. Again, I tend not to do that, but I tend to be the odd man out really, don't mm -hmm. I? Um, do, you have, do, do you have a set way you tend to go top to bottom, bottom to top? Uh, yeah, top to bottom. Top when to I, bottom. When I'm, I'm scroll sorting, definitely, but uh, it's just a, a weird kind of thing that I've got. Do you know, I I, I, what happens, it's just how my brain works, um, where, and it's the same when I'm scroll sorting, Sometimes when I'm scroll sawing, I'll actually be thinking about a little alteration that I plan on making to the design. And so I always go to that first to sort that out before I forget. Um, and it's the same with the carving. I tend to do things like that. Um, and then another twist about the design as well, because yeah. we, we had a difference of opinion about the design, right? I forgot that. What happened? Yeah, you've forgotten, haven't you? Yeah, so at least you're forgetting things. Oh, yeah, I forget. That's very encouraging. I forget, I forget plenty of things. Yeah. Um, it was about the, the flower. <coughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I was going to change it. Yeah, he is right. I've, I've remembered now. Um, yeah, I was originally going to change it um, to what we do, which is a five-petal flower. And 
he basically he said, well, why are you going to do that? I said, well, because we do a five petal flower. And he said, well, you don't need to. Why, why are you going to change it? And I thought, but I thought, yeah, fair enough. We keep it as the original was. Um, so exactly. Yeah. But, but the advantage of keeping it as it is, again, We've got the flower. There we are. Jas Jasper, Jasper does the same, same as, same as myself. He tends to jump about. He's an artist, and he there jumps about the page. There we are. There you go. See, it's, it's just what but comes on your flower thing as well. Yep. The um, Sunday, I think. It's okay, Dave's reading these comments. Yeah, I'm reading the comments and I tell you, there's a couple in there. Bob wants to see um, sharpening the chisels. We can sort that out. We'll set that up now. We'll either do it at the end of this demonstration or we can do it in the next live stream. But yeah, we can show you. There's two techniques that we use for sharpening gouges. One is on the Tormek. The problem with the Tormek is it's quite an expensive piece of equipment. The other method that we use is with a simple slip slipstone oil stone that sort of thing but yeah um we, we do our best uh, the music is a little loud right we'll turn that down uh let's have a look uh boom, 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 boom. there you go how's that let's just check oh, that might be too much uh there we are try 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 it now. Is that better? Let us let us know. <laughs> if that's all right, let us know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you know, by going back to that flower, um, because the outside part had four um, points. Yeah. To so we'll put a five-pointed flower. There would be nothing wrong with it. No. But it would just go away from the actual design. That, yeah, that's exactly. The, and, and again. As far as carving is concerned, I know it sounds petty and small, but it's easier to carve four than five because you've got that, again, time for one extra petal. It doesn't, you know, it sounds really trivial, but unfortunately, um, time, time is money. And, and uh, that's the way, you know, you have to uh, I think it was it. that particular song a couple of minutes ago. It was really like, and for some reason, but it's okay not to... Uh, you don't have to turn it off or anything. No, it's fine. Uh, check check it for us now, because we we what it is. See, is when you're doing the live stream, we can always we we we're not because we're on mute. We don't hear it, so anything like that, we appreciate the feedback because we we can't hear it. Uh, much better here in the states. Good, good. Um, right, yeah. The the sharpening, basically. Simple answer to how we do it, see, is all of the gouges we're working with, they're external angles, so you sharpen them on the outside edge, um, and what you do, you get a little bit of a burr on the inside, so you just get a little roughness as you've sharpened them, and then you take that burr off and you polish the metal. You can use a leather strop. We've got, on the side of the Tormek, you've got honing wheels, so um, you can use those just to... Um, uh, just just to basically bring up the metal and um, if you want Mark Bowen says if you want I'll bring my chisels down next week and you can show how to sharpen them from from blood yeah you're more than welcome Mark if you want to bring them down to us we, we'll, have, we'll have a little look and uh, I don't know how much you mentioned about the timber that you're using as well Dave I did mention it right. we mentioned well, we were in a bit I of oak that again is quite important because um, the you know the choice of your wood again can, can sort of determine how easy or difficult it is to carve. A yeah. lot of people making love spoons use lime wood. Yeah. I think it's called basswood in America. Yeah, you refer um, to it in the US as basswood, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but again, that also again determines the price. Yeah. Um, we, we tend to stick to two uh, timbers with our spoons on the internet, and that's mahogany, Recycled mahogany, in fact. Well, not now we're into the commercial side of it. When you're selling on I the internet, in the commercial side of it all since since this started. Go on. I yeah. I, when <laughs> when you when you're looking at the internet, you have to make sure the spoon that you send is as close to the drawing as it as it possibly is. Because if you send something like, for instance, we don't use we 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 use in oak and mahogany. And oak, you'll get little blemishes and things like that in that sometimes you don't, you know, you, you don't know are there until you start carving and working with it. Um, but unfortunately, if you send that, you can guarantee you'll have an email saying, oh, there's a blemish in my spoon and things like that. Although we put it on the website saying you will get different things in the grain. So that's why at our workshop here, 
we carve love spoons in all sorts of wood, oak, ash, sycamore, maple, teak, mahoganies, um, different fruit woods, apple, cherry, pear, plum, whatever we can get hold of. But on the internet, you have to have that sort of consistency. And so if people want a, a dark wood, we offer mahogany. And if they want a light wood, we tend to, um, uh, we tend to, to, to work in, in oak. Uh, although it's more of a mid-tone, I would say. Than but it's, a, a, it's a very important aspect. The timber yeah. is a very important part of the love spoon. Because yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think at some stage we got some uh, occupational therapy uh, people coming. Yeah, and, they're supposed to be and next it, week. And it, and it is. It's, it's, it is working with wood. It is a therapy. It is therapeutic, yeah. You know, you're, oh, it, it's a... a it's a weird sort of thing. I know it. I know the wood is actually in in part the, the tree has been cut down. It's dead, but in on another part, it's still a live material. Oh, the wood burning warrior is asking um, if you make make one in a, with a German Shepherd. Yeah, I mean on that front, what I would say is if you want, we've done a few dogs. I tell you what, we tend to do to represent pets on love spoons um, is to is to use the paw print. That's the, the symbol that's most popular. If you want a, a an actual dog, what we need is side profile. So you need the side profile of the dog's head, then we can work from it. What it is, is because of, it's the depth of field. If it's, oh, if it's yeah. facing, if it's front on, then it's, it's very difficult, because we do low relief, it's very difficult to get it to look right. If it's side on, so if it's a side on profile of the dog, we can work from the image. So that's what we would need is a high res image. Um, uh, how do you come across recycled mahogany, Jasper's asking. Um, is it off cuts or is it from existing pieces that are no longer useful? Right, main way that we get hold of mahogany, window, window frames, door frames, those sorts of things, because there's so much wood. Um, I know you, 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 at some stage, you, you'll have to come down the workshop at some stage. We're just, we're not far from Tenby and we can show you how, how we get all of that sort of thing. Math, uh, dad's just behind the camera. He's just picked up a piece of wood here. Um, that was a piece that Math had. He wanted you to have a look at it. Have a look at it, yeah. I, I, it's, that's mahogany. So that's an old piece of furniture. Um, when I picked it up, first of all, I thought it was. I reckon it's like, it's around the sort of Kerouin. Well, if it's Kerouin, it's- It's a bit splintery. But it's an okay mahogany, but that's what we generally do. There's a, pass it here, dude. Old, old, old I, furniture, I old yeah. fixtures, old Here's fittings. A typical, you can see the joint at the end, look. You can see where there's there some go. holes in it. So, so you can there see. was a hinge or something there. Yeah, so anything like that. Furniture, it's amazing. You'd be amazed. If, if you start putting the word around to people that you're looking for old furniture and old, you know, fixtures, fittings, You'd be amazed at what gets thrown out. There's so many things that people just throw away. Um, we we had, um, oh, let's think. I mean, we used to go to the furniture sales and we'd get all sorts of old furniture. And the furniture oak is easier to work with than a lot of the oak that we, we're working with today, to be honest with you. But you don't see it so often. So you see, in the meantime, as I'm carving away here, what I'm doing is I'm continuing to do those stop cuts in the design. Uh, you'll notice as well this block underneath that I move about. And the reason for that is that it's, um, it's sort of, that is all the pressure, as I'm carving down, all the pressure goes through that block. So it's, it stops whatever I'm carving from sort of flipping over, that sort of thing, and it stops it from falling out of the vise. Um, what's your thoughts on it? Are you thinking it's uh because what it is mahogany there we go interesting one if you if anyone who doesn't know it there's between uh let me get this right there's between two and three thousand different types of mahogany throughout the world some of those like Honduras mahogany uh the south american mahoganies are better quality for carving some of the other ones then some of the asian mahoganies they're not so good quality for working in well, look at Let's that have a look. there you go Oh, blimey that. Yeah, that'll, that'll do the job. No, that's nice stuff, that is. When I, I tell you what it is, it was because it had that rough splintery feel, yeah. but it's been I, I outside. I think it's been outside I think for it's a been long outside. time. Yeah. But you look at the other part, I've got oh, that's beautiful. the top there. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. Hang on now, that makes you wonder. That is a different mahogany to that. 
no, I think no, I think what it is. That's it says you go in a bit that's deeper. Been to that's the sun. had more exposure to the yeah, yeah spin and the, and, and, yeah. and the weather and the, yeah. So um, so he was asking my, my brother Math. Now there's a piece of furniture that he'd seen and he was asking if we wanted it. Yeah. So that'll be another one on the on the list. But yeah, recycling it, getting it from unwanted sources, it's a great great way to go. Right. What I'm going to do now is we're going to. We're going to shape, we're going to just shape our horseshoe um, as well. This fitted in, we fitted this live stream in um, because of course with the competition that Jasper won, that was the one aspect to it. The other aspect to it of course is this week we've got St. David's Day. So we thought it all fitted in, it all tied in nicely together. So uh, that was the idea behind doing a live stream. Okay, back to that piece though, you can see how ropey that is there now on the top. Yes. Right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. But again, because yeah. of the subject, the love spoon subject, yeah, right? Yeah. You could use a piece of timber that wasn't necessarily perfect. No, absolutely. Um, because so many different people have different ideas. Um, well, you can actually make a feature out of the imperfections. Exactly. That's, that's something that exactly. can be done. Some people are happy with that. It's that's so, right. And so it, it, you know, it is open to. Um, to those sorts of things and, and using the imperfections to really, um, yeah, to, to really sort of bring them out. It's a, it's a subject, love spoons. It's, it's a subject which, um, again, the I know I've said lots about the uh, uh, powers of be. They, they don't sort of really appreciate what we've got in Wales. No, absolutely. With, with it's, we're, we're very fortunate to have the love spoon tradition in Wales and it is something that they should be looking to um, so protect so many angles, so many... a lot more than they do. Yeah. Uh, oh, the wood burning warrior wants to know what's St David's Day. That's the uh, St David is the na uh, is the Pembroke patron saint, saint of Wales, and we're close to um, we're in Pembrokeshire, and we're not we're about an hour away from St David's Cathedral up in the north of Pembrokeshire, and that's so that's all, all tied in with it. And yes, yeah, so it's the patron saint. So it's, it's basically the national day for us here in Wales. It's our patron and, and saint. So the first the children, of March. The children will go to school. Yeah, the children quite often will dress up in and, um, dress up in, in sort of traditional dress. So you've got traditional Welsh costume. Uh, other popular choices is a, a sort of mining um, sort of themes and uh, Welsh rugby tops, that sort of thing. And the, the other thing they'll do is they'll wear a, a, a leek or a daffodil. Um, what else? What have I missed? Uh, Cowl. Well, is it like a lamb or ham soup or broth? They make Welsh cakes. Yeah. So it's basically um, all the things that, you know, all the different things that, that, that give us a, a unique identity here in Wales. Um, they're all sort of uh, highlighted. And uh, I, I know like in, in my son's school now, my one son is going, uh, he's going on uh, a trip to St. David's on St. David's Day. And my other son, I think they've got like a little bit of an Ice Steadfers, right. uh, which again is like a festival of dancing, singing, poetry, arts, crafts, all sorts of different things. Yeah. So lots of things going on for right. St. David's Day. I'm going to go back on the scroll saw then. Right, is Thomas okay? Woodcarver's going on the scroll saw. Is that okay? So what I might do is to change the split screen. And if you're anybody as well, um, oh, okay, never heard of it. Yeah, it's not something, um, I mean, to be honest, a lot of people, you know, we, we have visitors from all around the world in the workshop and... Um, you know, at different times, they say we've they, they not heard much about Wales, to be honest with you. We, we, we don't, we're not, a, we're not really a nation here that is, um, uh, they, they, they don't really promote us a lot. Hence, where things like the Love Spoon, quite often people are not aware of it. Um, what it is, Wales, we're a Celtic nation. Um, and so uh, we have quite a, a unique and, and fascinating history here in Wales, but in terms of sharing that with the rest of the world, we tend not to do as good a job as Ireland and Scotland. Um, but that's why we do what we do, where we try and share, spread the word and share the different things that we have that are completely unique to Wales. Uh, there's always one child at school in the dragon, yeah, dragon costume. Yeah, yeah, there is. Yeah, that's another popular one, dressing up as the dragon, spot on. 
So, Thomas the Woodcarver, you're, you're off to the I scroll saw. Scroll so what I'm thinking is to change, let's change. Um, here we are, I'll put it to everybody. What's the, what's the preference? We've got, um, we've got either a split view, like that one. So you've got the split view of the carving. Let me know in the comments, what's your preference? You can either see a split screen of the carving, or we could do a triple, um, like that. So you can see me talking, you can see the carving and the scroll sawing. Let me, let me know your preference. Uh, I'll leave it on the triple for now. Um, but the idea is, is that you get a little bit of a flavour to see how a spoon is cut out. Do you want to pull that door a little bit for me, Dan? Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let me know your preference. I think for now, we will leave it on... We leave it on the split screen like that for now. So Thomas the Woodcarver is, is going to do some scroll sawing. So you can see, with the scroll saw, you'll be able to see then how we get a love spoon to this stage. And then with this one here, you see the carving demonstration, so you see how that process progresses. Uh, Lee Higgins, fun fact, is me St. Patrick was from where? Spot on. Yeah. That's right, the patron saint of Ireland was a Welshman. <laughs> the triple is good. Here we are, we put it on the triple. We go with that one there. Yes, yeah, spot on. And hello, Liam, hope all is well. Thanks for joining us as well. And yeah, because um, you see it in the cathedral as well, where they have the three, the three sort of Celtic nation, nation patron saints, with St. Andrew as well, so the three of them together. But that's right, of course. St. Patrick was indeed a Welshman. Not many, it's one of those ones, Liam, not many people know that. What else we got there? Uh, double is probably easier, triple is a bit confusing to watch, no worries. Uh, triple is a tiny bit vomit, no worries. We go for the double. You've been outvoted, I'm afraid there, Ma. We go back to the double. There we are, we stick with that. It's, it's, that's the main thing, is focusing on the, um, on, on the making there. Um, I tell you what's probably happening there as well, Ma. It's, it's not so bad for yourself, because Mark is watching, Mark normally watches us on the telly. So if you're watching on a bigger screen, the triple's probably fine. But we stick with the double. So hopefully, by having the two, um, uh, the, the two screens at the same time, you can see what Thomas Woodcarver's doing there. You feed that blade, so the scroll saw is a fantastic piece of equipment. If anybody is interested in, um, Oh, you're very welcome, Liam. Pleasure. No, pleasure to be able to, uh, to, to work with you on this. Um, yeah, so that one there, anybody who's interested in wooden crafts and is, you know, joining us for the first time today, that um, scroll saw is fantastic in terms of allowing us to, to make all sorts of different craft items. So it's the sort of backbone of what we do with the love spoon, where we can use it to do the cutting out. Um, oh, cheers, Mark. Uh, no worries. And those gouges, anytime you want those sharpened, Mark, let us know. Bring them down. Pop in to say hello and we'll sort them out for you. And as I was saying, if we get a chance to do a little demonstration of the sharpening. Um, I know there was a request from, I'll just scroll back, who was mentioned that one there? I think, yeah, it was Bob. It was Bob, was it? Yeah, you'll have to correct me if I was wrong, but Bob was requesting a little demonstration of the sharpening. We can try and sort that out at the end for you. So, as you can see, we're just working our way now up through the design, and we're just, what you do, we do, the carving we do is described as low relief. So that is where we sort of build up the different levels, um, the different levels that we want in the carving using stock cuts and then cutting down into the wood itself. Uh, I'm just looking here now. Where's my one guy gone? On Thomas Woodcarver's side of the bench. So we're just using it, and that's what we do, see, is we keep shaping everything, take away the waste wood that you don't want, until then it's all, in terms of the design, the way that you would like it to be. Uh, you can see Thomas Woodcarver is cutting around that dragon shape. So that, with that scroll saw, the reason it's such a good piece of kit is that it uses a very fine blade and that fine blade can be used to cut out a shape 
And for us as woodcarvers, it gives us the first sort of basic profile, but we also do a lot of projects where we're working solely just on the scroll saw itself. Right, so we've got a little bit of, there's a little bit that's got to come off there. Just where we cut around the outside, just a little mark on there, so we just carve that away. Continue shaping. And because I sit down to carve, you'll see me regularly moving the love spoon um, so it faces in the one direction or it faces the other direction. Uh, if Dad was doing this, he would just be walking from one side of the carving to the other. Uh, right, yeah, so we go into, we go into the, uh, again, to get the flower, we've done our basic stop cuts. And one thing, as I was carving this one, I noticed the centre of our flower, there was a little bit of movement, which means that the wood might have popped out just a little bit. But that's nothing for us to worry about because if that happens, and for anyone who's new to wood carving, if you have a petal or something pops out like that, all you do is to carve the whole thing deeper. So you can carve the whole design deeper into the wood again. Uh, how accessible is wood carving to get into? Uh, I have poor hand-eye coordination despite being a good artist and I'm worried I'd end up accidentally carving my finger instead of the wood. Right, well what I would suggest with, with that Jasper, I would suggest it, it could, if you're an artist, you are starting at a big, big advantage to a lot of people and um, you'd be starting at a big advantage to myself because I, I, that was never my forte. I very much had to teach myself it. And what I would say with wood carving, the main things, as long as you stick to those simple principles where you, you carve away from yourself, I know I'm carving across a bit here now, but I'm still carving away from myself, and you keep both hands behind the cutting edge, wood carving is safer than working with a knife in the kitchen. And the reason I'll explain that if you're working and you're cutting something, like you're cutting a piece of bread, you're holding the bread with the one hand and you're cutting with the other. So if you slip, you can cut your hand. But with wood carving, you're, you should, if you're doing it with the methods that we suggest, you should be cutting away from yourself. On top of that then, the equipment that is required, you can get into wood carving where you're just working on a strong bench using a clamp. So here we are. So you've got a clamp like that one there. So you can have, you can clamp whatever you've got down. And that's what I always recommend. You'll see a lot of people doing wood carving. They do what, what we refer to as whittling and they hold it. And that's when it's sort of higher risk for cutting yourself. If you secure it, then you've got a much better chance that wood, so it's not moving around, it's nice and stable it makes the entire process a lot, and I emphasize, a lot easier um, and a lot safer. Um, so, and then on top of that, you want good quality wood carving chisels and gouges. And again, you, you can see, if you have a look through our channel, we, we give a lot of advice on that front, on the sort of chisels and gouges to get into. And what I would say on that front really I would say that it would actually be great for you to have a go at doing, the same as the scroll saw would be great for you to have a go on, because it'll actually help you with that hand-eye coordination. And I'll give you a story on that one. Uh, when I first started in the workshop, I would look at Dad carving and I would watch what he was doing and I, I just marvel and, and, and look at it, how he'd get all of his flowers to my eye all of his flowers would be perfect. And I think, how does he get them so perfect like that, so symmetrical? So I'd ask him, I'd say, how do you do that where you get all of those, um, you get all of those flowers, they're all absolutely perfect. How do you do that? And he said, well, what happens is as you carve more, your eye improves. And then about a few years later, I'd be looking at his flowers and I'd look at them and I'd go, how can he not see that that is a million miles out? And all that had happened is that your eye, it improves. And as an artist, you, you, you will, you'd be well away with it because you've got those core skills. And as your eye improves, you, you'll be away with it. And the main thing, 
with wood carving, love spoon carving, and the scroll sawing, it doesn't matter where you're starting from. So in terms of what your strengths and weaknesses are, you're, you're, as long as you are determined, if you have it in you, that you are determined to learn it and to do it, you're guaranteed success with it. Because it is a matter of time. And with some of us, it takes a little bit longer. And with others, it's a little bit more natural. But it's not always the one that it's completely natural to is the one that will succeed and will become the, 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 the better wood carver. It quite often is the case that the one who has to struggle a little bit initially to develop those skills is, is the one that will, in the long run, be the one that sticks at it and, and gets to a higher level. Um, but having an artistic background gives you a really, really good basis to start from. And what I can do, um, what I can do as well, I can demonstrate this little flower here is not a million miles away from what we sort of teach. It's pretty much what we teach for, for anybody to learn uh, wood carving. So yeah, great, great, great question, but I, I would highly recommend it. And with your artistic skills, um, you know, just to give you a little idea, um, we've got little projects, there you go, little jewellery project like that. That's all cut out on the scroll saw. And initially, doing projects like that can be really challenging, um, but that's how you can develop those skills. And you can come up with all sorts of different designs to, to do in, in wood. And I'm just looking, look at that. What it is, I've done what a method called stack cutting. So we stick three pieces of wood together and cut them out at the same time. And that's how we, we've done that. And I can see it's just off to the one side of it. What do we miss there? Um, I use a clamp. This is Mark here. Um, my chisels are just cheap Amazon ones, but I enjoy it mainly because it helps me with my mental health. Yeah, and a very important point too, Mark. Um, and that is the thing. It is such a, a lovely process and so therapeutic. Um, and that, 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 again, that, that just shows with it, you know, we, we're carving here, um, you know, this is what we do for, for our work, but you can get into carving with a relatively inexpensive set of, set of chisels and gouges. And, and to be honest, that is really the way that I would recommend is to get a few simple chisels and gouges and have a go and see if you enjoy it. You know, don't go and get a ton of equipment and then think, oh no, this isn't, this isn't for me. But it takes time to learn and it takes time to develop your skills. But what you're looking at is that if it's something that you've got the patience to do, um, and like somebody like Mark, I've seen some of his work, beautiful, beautiful work that you're doing, Mark, and um, it just shows you, because Mark has got that desire to do it, and because you enjoy it, you develop and you, you produce lovely stuff from, from what you do. So yeah, it, it is, it's well worth having a go at and it's well worth giving, giving, it, giving it a bit of time and you will, you'll see, you'll see the improvements. Um, I just wondering now as well, what, what scroll saw do you work with as well, Mark? Because I know you, you do some uh, scroll sawing. Always interested to know what, in the back of my mind, I've got a feeling, um, you have answered before, but uh, yeah, it'd be, it'd be good to know. And the other thing as well, for, you know, we, we always, the problem we've got, we used to do, we used to teach people how to carve here. Uh, the problem we've got though, see, is all the health and safety and the rules, of reg, uh, rules and regulations. But we still, we still help people, we still demonstrate it, um, and we still explain how to do it. I don't have any in my house and would, um, that would allow for any woodworking to be done. Do clubs for woodworking exist? Where could I go um, to work there? Yeah, I mean, give you, right, give you a few examples. With love spoon carving, uh, Mark as well, Mark may know because Mark's in Clinetley. I believe where you are in your, because you're further across, you're, you're further across in South Wales, I believe in your area, you've got a better chance of finding um, clubs that are doing wood carving. I, I, we have a few people coming in the workshop from clubs in, in South Wales. There's one place you could try as a starting reference point, and that would be um, Axminster Tools by, is it by Culverhouse Cross up in Cardiff?
Cardiff. Again, I'll, I'll bring Mark in on this. He, he may know. Um, you could go in there and ask them, do they know of any wood carving clubs? Because it's a place where wood carvers would go. As I said before, um, same, Mark, Jasper, both of you, you're more than welcome. Pop in the workshop here because we can always um, give a few little ideas and a bit of encouragement and things like that. But yeah, I believe there are wood carving clubs. The one area that you will come across them in South Wales definitely is a bridge end. Um, but you may find... Ah, hang on, hang on now, hang on. Yeah, I'm thinking now, Jasper, there are... Um, there are spoon carving clubs. Um, right, there's what there's a few there's a few people. Um, there are a few people in the Ronda and things like that um, that are doing some. Uh, let me think. If you look, if you put a search in on Facebook, there's a Facebook group, I believe, where there there are you know there's information, there's spoon carving clubs and things like that. Um, but if it's more wood carving, as I said, we can we can help out as well well with that. So I'd have a little look around on social media. I do believe there is a, a sort of South Wales spoon carving club as well. Um, but there there are yes there are different clubs, and that will be the first one. Axminster Minister to um, hello Marty. Hope all is well. Nice Axminster. Oh thank you. Uh, we have Whitland Club that meets in the winter. Brilliant. Yeah we we. They, they are dotted around here. What it is with us, we're so busy in the, in the workshop that um, it'd be good for us actually to get some of the details of the different clubs around um, here at the workshop. But that's the first one I would try, would be Axminster Tools. Um, the scroll saw. Ah, yeah, good scroll saw though, Mark. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, and men shit, yeah, spot on. That's another organisation as well, Mark, is... Um, um, we we have a we've got one that I'm hoping is going to come in the workshop because there's the organisation of the men in sheds. Um, they they were asking about coming in, and so it's um, that's another organisation have usually got wood carvers in and around them. I think it's called something like men in sheds or something like that. So yeah, well worth having a look at. Uh, guys, thanks so much for the show. Ah, oh, there we are. No problem. No, thank you for joining us again. Hope you enjoyed and uh, yeah, have a great week. Yeah, so uh, moving back onto this one as well, you can start to see where we're, we're bringing out some of the other elements of the design. So this one here is the uh, Celtic Eternity sign. So the idea is the eternal life, eternal love, that sort of thing. And we're, we're just creating that effect of it going over and under. Ah, uh, Crispy's, um, Jasper Hunt. Get Googling, mate. There are loads of men's sheds, etc. Vifers is huge. So they, yeah. Um, so they must be something nearby. Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's, there's all sorts of different um, organisations. I'm thinking there's, there's Chris there. Chris is in the Swansea area. So yeah, it's um, in South Wales. There are a, a number of number of clubs and different things like that. So definitely putting it on Google I, and Facebook as well. I'm sure there's. The one group that um, um, that we see, and I think they are in sort of in your area, but well worth yeah, well worth checking out. Uh, and hello as well, Chris. Hope all is well. Uh, the diff, Cardiff. The diff. <laughs> I'm glad you explained that. That went over me a little bit then. But yeah, the I'm sure um, that'll be a good as good a starting point as anywhere for information would be Axminster Tools. Um, get, yeah, definitely have a good look into it. There'll be some of that. There's always South Wales. There's always a, a lot of interest in wood carving. Um, the the other one then uh, wood turning. There's a lot of interest in, and um, the love spoon. That's always a popular one here in in South Wales because we're sort of I don't know we're a little bit. Because we're, we're a, a sort of family workshop, we, we have quite a few people come in and it's great. They share the work that they're doing with us. But in terms of links with the different organisations, we've never, we've always sort of been so busy doing our own thing that we're not the, it's not something that we've ever been involved with. And the other thing you may find 
is you may find there are classes um, in the, in your area that somebody's teaching it. I know. I'm trying to think. I know the the one. I don't want to give the one gentleman's name out without permission on here, but I know there's one gentleman in your area um, who I think would be perfect who does it. But I don't want to give his name out on here because I haven't got permission to. Um, yeah. Hope all is well with you as well, Chris. Um, the I'm glad glad all is well. Um, yeah, uh, how's, i got to ask as well, how's our scroll saw going? Have you managed to get much done on it? It's time is a thing. But yeah, hope it's, uh, hope it's working out well for you. So you can see with this one, we're starting to get the different levels, the different depths. And it's coming on, it's taking shape. And, uh, and the other thing as well, uh, for you, Jasper, with, with all, when all is said and done, if you can... Um, if you can, you know, even with all of these things, don't don't sort of be deterred with, with any of it. Um, it's, it's very much where there's a will, there's a way with it. Because um, I was lucky; I grew up around the workshop, and that that's you know very fortunate from that front. But Dad, now he he had access to the tools and the materials because he was a carpenter and joiner. And that there, if you were just watching, was a case of do as I say, not as I do, because I was cutting towards myself, which you shouldn't do. Um, yeah, but other than that, he very much sort of taught himself how to do it. Scroll saw's going lovely, brilliant. Ah, oh, you can't you can't beat it when the scroll saw's going well. Ah, oh, that's great. Glad to hear it. Yeah, great bit of kit, and that's another bit of kit you could you could look at Jasper because that gives you so many different options working with the scroll saw. We do loads and loads of scroll saw projects. Lots of different little demonstrations that we do with that lovely bit of kit. You'll see there, Thomas the Woodcarver's cut out that dragon and he's cutting out now the tree of life. Right, so we're working our way through. Now one thing that will need to be done on this design, there'll be quite a bit of sanding. Now when it comes to sanding, ideally, you're working with sandpaper and a block, um, but that's not always possible. So sometimes what you need to be doing is uh, to just use it freehand, uh, which is not ideal, but if you're not sanding a flat surface as we're not, unfortunately, that's, that's the only way that we can really go about, um, yeah, sanding. So, um, that's basically how we do it. And you can see now, we worked, we worked our way through a lot of the design. And we're gonna add now the detail to, we've got to add the detail to the horseshoe. We've got to add the sort of finishing to um, that eternity sign. And then we've got to add the shape and then the detail to our hearts as well. Now in terms of this one as well, the piece of oak that we're working in, yeah, it's carved quite nicely. And what we will do, hopefully, there's quite a bit of time that needs to be spent on this spoon finishing, but hopefully we're in a situation where we can do a little bit of, well, the first coat of shellacking. So you'll see the beautiful color of the grain coming out. Now that one there is, is a little, is a little split. And I tell you what it is, it's a knot. So it's just coming up there on the outside. So how can we stop that from going right the way through? Let's have a little look. There we are. Yeah, that's just stopping it. What it is, sometimes you just get a little splinter comes up and then you're looking for, to stop it from developing into a problem. And so that's what we can do is, just to carve it back the other way to stop it spreading. I've noticed today we haven't heard from the, uh, the carver. I would have thought possibly the earlier start has thrown things off. So apologies if you're watching this on uh, playback. And if you're interested in the wood carving as well, the carver does some nice different demonstrations. So well worth having a look on that channel as is Gabby, who's doing wood turning at the moment and is out in Romania. And that's something, Jasper, you'll find here. Um, you get a good, a lovely little community 
that develops where everybody's sort of uh, supporting one another. And uh, so you've got people like Chris who's doing scroll sawing and uh, you've got people like Mark who's making all sorts of different things, both scroll sawing and wood carving. I don't know, do you, I asked Chris, do, do you do some wood carving as well? Well, I know you do the scroll sawing. That's mainly what we've spoken to previously when we have. Um, Carvin is st still a bit. <laughs> yeah, he is. I think I think he is. It's uh, it's an early start for. It's an early start set state site, and um, I think it throws people out because we we jump about a little bit in terms of start time. Right. So now we're on to that stage of creating that effect where it overlaps. So again, it's the same processes where you carve down into the woods and you will use the different gouges. You'll notice now I've turned that gouge. Most of the cutting I will do with it in that direction. Now I've turned it round and we're using the reverse angle. And as we said, Thomas the Woodcarver there is scroll sawing the spoon. So hopefully that gives an idea for how uh, I'm more carving than scrolling. Ah, oh, there we are. So, more in with the, um, brilliant, but the scroll saw, always a great way to sort of do the preparation for, for your wood carving. Um, yeah, so you get, hopefully with Thomas wood carving on the scroll saw, it gives an, an, an insight into how we get to this stage. Right, now onto this piece. And a lot of what we do, where it comes in the sort of ex experience, is knowing which gouge to select to do which cut. So this one here. This little loop as well, we added on the top, twofold, just to finish things off, but also so we got somewhere where you could hang the love spoon, potentially. Uh, currently working on making a dice board. Brilliant. Bit of scroll saw geometry. Fantastic. Sounds like a good project. Brilliant. And is it is it in wood you work in or something else? Because that's what we're mainly working in is uh, is wood. But that's great. Where it's the versatility of working with things like the scroll saw, but the material of wood, very versatile material. So many things that you can do. Right. The garage is too cold. Yeah, tell me about it. I've been doing all my training in the in the shed. It's fine once it warmed up. Oh my goodness, it does get a bit cold in there, and it leaks as well. So halfway through the training session, you've usually got the water dripping on your head. Right, we got most of the design in shape. And that tree of life, there's a lot of cuts in that one that Thomas the Woodcarver's doing. It is taking shape. This is where it gets really, um, it gets really difficult for us to judge. We get asked a lot in terms of pricing, how much will such and such a job cost? And it is, it's very difficult because we don't know until we finish it. So over the years, we have tried to develop and have, uh, have, have got a, a bit of an insight and an understanding for for pricing the work that we do. But it's amazing because there's, there's so many different aspects to making love spoons and wooden gifts. It's always difficult to accurately give a price for how much it's going to cost to make something. Right, now can you see, we've created that idea now that the eternity sign, that it overlaps itself. So just by using simple stop cuts and then carving down into those stop cuts, we create that image and that idea that the whole design is overlapping. And the way I carve, I shape everything. I bevel all the edges. Now, Dad, now, he doesn't do any of this. And when I first started 
working with him. He'd say, why are you doing that? You're wasting time. It's too much work. It's too much time involved in doing it. And um, the truth is, is because I was heavier handed than him, sometimes, as I had here, the edge, the edges of where I'd be carving, they would flake away a little bit because I was a bit heavier handed than him. And so the reason I used to bevel all the edges was to cover it up. But then I realised that it gave my work a, a different look to Dad's, and so I had my own carving style. And then afterwards, I will then sand that to shape it a bit more. And that's how, from something that was a, um, in some ways a weakness of your carving, you turn it into a strength of your carving. You give it an identity then, see? And that's what we did. So when you were saying, you know, in terms of uh, hand-eye coordination, what you will find is that you're, what you perceive as your weaknesses, they can often turn into the, a strength and give an identity to what you do. Make it unique to you. So don't always think of your what you perceive as your weaknesses as, as actual weaknesses. There's, there's sometimes that something that makes you different to somebody else. Right. We're just going to shape these pieces here. So we're just taking away that waste wood. Just like so. And one of the nice parts of this process when you're doing the carving is the more you carve the spoon, the further you go through the process, the more it reveals the character and the grain of the wood. And that's something we're always conscious of is that you're working in a beautiful natural material. And so you never want to try and upstage it. You want to bring it out to its best. And there we are. Let's have a little look. A bit of wood needs to come out of there. Just like so. Shape it on the tops, like so. And I think we will be, yeah, I think we're going to give Thomas Woodcarver a shout in a minute. Uh, answering your earlier question, Di, the dice board is in wood, yes, the bay's bottom, brilliant. Uh, I'm also finishing a little pendant for my mother, heart shape, fantastic. And then hand finish, brilliant. Yeah, that's what we. That's one of the demonstrations we got coming up. Is um, we're doing all like uh, Celtic jewellery and things like that. It's one of the most popular demos we've ever done. Um, so I thought we could do another one. So that's that's one of the demos we got coming up. I love making jewellery. Jewellery is great fun. And the scroll saw perfect for doing it. Mark says that sounds nice. Spot on. I completely agree. Yeah, it sounds like some nice projects that you're working on. Yeah, that's the beauty of it. It's one of those things, I'm going to say to, to, to Jasper, when you when you sort of get started with woodworking, um, they, they're so, it, it's infinite, the things, the possibilities. And as an artist, you know, you can really get creative and you can take that artistic, um, that artistic side of what you're doing and use that I think left a bit late for St. David's at yeah. But you got um you got Mother's Day coming up, and you so fits it'll fit fit in with that. Um yeah, the wood, it, it, it's such a great material. There's so many different things that you can do. Okay, we've got as far as that. There we are. Thomas Woodcarver's got the top half of this design done. It's a lot of it's a lot of cutting, isn't it? It is rather. And uh, I can see you, 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 you're trying to struggle in there a bit to walk. Other, just other gives you... you know, the, there you the go. Cell, tell, explain about the cellophane, why it's not the, the cellophane. Yeah, little idea that we've, um, that we've 
we've basically been given, somebody was saying it came from um, Steve Goods. We had it given to us by somebody in a, in a demonstration that we were doing. Um, and what you do see, you put packing tape on there and as you're cutting out, it lubricates the blade. Just makes it a little bit easier. The other thing you can do is to work with a, an oily wood. It's just different, work with a piece of wood that's got a lot of oil in it. Uh, I've gone for that one, but I prefer, uh, let's have a look. I prefer that one. Yeah, that's better. See it nice and clearly now. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, right. I think whatever uh, my friend would like me to ask on her behalf, right? Do you listen to music when you're working on a project by yourself? I tell you what I do. Um, I put on uh, YouTube. I watch documentaries, me listen to music, all sorts. Uh, it it's one of those things where once, once you get used to doing wood carving, you tend to be like you would be now as, as you, you, you know, you're maybe doing a painting, you, you, certain things you can do and you just develop that ability where it's, it becomes second nature. And so I would put on, yeah, put on radio, sports, documentaries, all sorts of different things. Uh, I find it, I find it actually carved better so I might do a live stream like this. Um, and I find that I carve better if, if I'm doing, if I'm, if I'm really focused and intense on a carving, that's when I usually make a mistake. Uh, famous last words, because I'm going to do it now, but I'm going to make a mistake now. But yeah, I, I find that if I'm too, um, uh, I watch YouTube while drawing a so yeah, spot on. Um, so that's the sort of thing is that having something else going on I find is, 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 isn't a bad thing. Um, I wonder whether it comes from, be interesting actually, we put that out, out to everyone. What, what do you prefer to, you know, when you're doing your work, so people like Mark and Chris, I know on the scroll saw it's more difficult to do something else at the same time, but do you prefer to have something in the background or do you have to have sort of a quiet, um, you tend to, you tend to sort of work without any distractions, don't you? Well, yeah, I mean, I... Like, you know me, I've always got a documentary or something on them. Yeah. Usually, I, I like learning, I'll be honest with what it is, I like learning things, and so I'll be watching something, I'll be trying to learn something else quite often. So, for instance, we run a YouTube channel, so I'll be learning anything from colour grading, lighting camera angles um yeah don't look at the lighting for my live stream because we, we don't put it on because it's, it's it's too much um to you know it's because you can't edit it afterwards i just leave it come out with the camera however it comes out um but yeah the um doing something else i find there we are chris goes for silence and I have a lot of people come in the workshop and a lot of people say, Science is golden. That's Thomas Woodcarver giving his song there. Um, a lot of people say to me, because they'll watch me carving and they'll say, um, how can you do that with people watching and asking you questions? And it's just something I've always done. That's how it's always been for myself in the workshop. So, um, well, this one here, um, five, five, five minutes, and I reckon we're ready for shellac in five, ten minutes. Okay. So, okay. coat the shellac on that one. If, you, if you've got, if you can grab the shellac in a bit for me, that'll be great. Um, I'm just thinking I can take off a lot of the, the that layer then. Um, yeah, so different people have different preferences. Most people I speak to prefer you know, no, no distractions and just concentrate on what they're doing. But I, I, I find myself that I like different things going on. Um, and the only time what you, I'll be doing a demonstration like this and I'll hear a funny noise from the woods and then I'll stop and I'll be looking, right, what just happened? Cause that's usually a sign that you might have split something or, or damaged the, damaged the bit of wood. Cause these things do happen. And you'll be looking then what has gone wrong and how can we sort it out? Because there's always a solution. Shellac behind you. Brilliant. The Bruce as well. Fantastic. Ice cream and the girl. Brilliant. 
That's an important um, aspect as well. Yeah. Uh, when I first started the car. Right. Um, well, to make wood, you know, wood products generally was how to finish them. What yeah. material, you know, what was the best. That's right. And there's uh, always new products and ideas, isn't it, when it comes yeah, to the finishing? That's right. It's uh, and it's it's something that um, it's twofold. Really. You, you, it's something that suits yourself. Yeah. But of course, it's not good if it suits yourself and it doesn't sell. That's right. <laughs> So, uh, but that's the thing with this as well, isn't it? With arts and crafts, when it comes to the selling side of it, there's always an element of trial and error. That's another... Because we've had some products and we think, oh, this isn't, this isn't going to work. And they sell, sell brilliantly. And then we have other ones and we think this is great. And then a year later, you're still looking at them and they don't sell. Um, so that, that is trial and error. Uh, on the front of things like that and products and stuff like that, um, as some of you will know, we've done, we've done a few videos and we've got a few demonstrations coming up for them. Uh, that's a company out in California called Starbond. They do CA glue and things like that. Um, and I don't know if, um, well, I, yeah, I, I, I tell everyone, I'll probably get, I'll probably get told off now. Um, but they, they've got some new products coming up and they've got some good ideas. Um, if you're interested in adding colours and stuff like that, some of their ideas that they shared with us, they, they, they got some great ideas coming up. So yeah, keep an eye out with that. Um, they're our only, they're the only ones that we've ever done affiliate marketed. No, we did one affiliate marketing with somebody else, but with them, they're our, they're the only ones that we've committed to sort of long-term and simple reason for that. It's a good product that does the job. No, basically. But they're going to introduce, they've introduced some new things with abrasives, sandpapers, things like that. Um, and also they had a full RGB range. I don't think they've released that yet, but it looks brilliant. I, th I thought this is going to be great for getting creative. Is any little tools and ideas, because basically we don't, we're not going to recommend anything if it's a load of rubbish. Um, and we don't use it ourselves. And their stuff... For anyone interested in, and I've demonstrated it a few times, they do a black super glue, CA glue, and I love that. If you're doing like line art and things like that with your scroll sawing, you can fill the gaps in with the black CA glue, and it adds contrast and interest to the design. Yeah. yeah, so. And if you do anything with resin, they've got that coming up. Uh, oh, what I miss? I have TV on for mindless sound. Yeah, uh, too good of music, and I sing instead of working. Yes, that's it. <laughs> Another question from my friend, yeah? Can you make a really detailed dragon figure? Um, she asked, yeah, um, well, right. Basically, okay, so let's have a look without, let's put that there. I mean, that's the dragon that we do. I tell you what, why don't you grab a few of our dragons? Grab a few, we'll grab a few of our dragons and then we'll ask, how much more detail do you want it? Get out, get out. We go through the range of dragons we do. Because it's Welsh Love Spoons, I would say the most popular symbol, the most popular symbol that we do all together is, is the dragon. That would be the one that I get requested the most. We carve a lot of daffodils, uh, a lot of eternity signs, a lot of hearts. But the dragon is one that people do ask for a lot. So we do the full pen dragon. And then we do a few other little, we do a simpler one, and we've done a few more elaborate ones. But we'll show you a few um, and see how elaborate. The problem with the dragon, the downside with it, is it's an expensive carving, the dragon, because it's a lot of detail. It's a lot of detail, but yeah, we've done, we've done a lot of them. And a nice carving to, uh, to do. Let's have a little look. I'm so, a mahogany and an oak. Here's our simple one. That's a simple one. Very simple. And um, with the, the least amount of detail. So those are our simple, our simpler version of the of the Welsh dragon. Here we are. And then from there, you've got that one there. That's the one we mainly do. So you can see you've got all it's basically the full pen dragon. And the other is straight off the, the flag. Just that one. Yeah. You, you've got, and then you've got, 
the red dragon. dragon. Yeah. So you've got the timber being. Well, I, this is what I can't understand. And there you go. You can see it in oak. You can see it in mahogany. One thing I can understand: we sell more Welsh dragons in oak than we do in mahogany. And I always think it's the wrong choice of wood for people because the mahogany is red, isn't it? So it yeah. suits. And then. Um, she must be asking, so one day I can make her a dragon. Yeah, yeah, well, the dragon is, is great. Um, definitely a, a nice carving to do, but one you can add a lot of detail to. And there's another one that we did uh, back in 1997. Records two things, devolution, and then you also had Princess Diana passed away that year. So you've got different things recorded on it, and you've got the dragon there. So yeah, one that we do. Um, the simple one has so much charm to it. Exactly, yeah, it does. Um, but the, the most popular one we do is the, is the full pen dragon with all of the, but you can, you can do it. We do, as I said, a lot of what they call low relief carving, but you can do sort of more like a statue, um, a statue, like a figure, like a, a whole sort of standing up, um, full pen dragon. Uh, are there colors for St. David's day? I need another holiday. Uh, decorate for yeah I would say the right colors for right what you want Marty for St. David's Day uh, you want a couple of you want a couple of golden daffodils the main color for Wales would be red um, that'll be the main one red red because of the red dragon and then you've got green so you can you can go for red green and the other one red green and white yeah we got if you have a little look at the Welsh flag, if you go for those colours, red, green and white, you won't go far wrong. But red would be the, the sort of main one you'd see around. And then you've got the golden daffodils, you'll see. And then you've got the green and the white, so the colours on the flag. I'll ask, I'll ask Liam with it. What, would it. what would you go for there, Liam, if you're still with us? Because, um, uh, yeah, I know with the, with the college, but those, those would be the ones that we would, we would highlight. Right, so you can see we're just just getting a little bit of a uh, bit of detail there, and yellow, of course, yeah, yellow and black for St David's, of course, yellow and black, St David's, that's St David's flag. Um, so St David's flag is is yellow and black. Um, so you've got a number of colours you can go for there. If you're going for Welsh colours. Um, you'd be going for the, the red, green and white. And if you're going, for, if you're going more specific towards St. David's, of course it's, it's yellow and black, isn't it, St. David's flag? Yeah, it's the yeah. yellow cross on the black yeah. background. Spot on, yeah, of course. Thanks for that, Liam. You just jogged my memory. And also Jasper. Yeah, they had a, they had a vote on that with the flags and the, the Welsh flag got... Didn't they get voted the, cool, the coolest flag in the world, they said, I think. Yeah. I've been talking to that camera. I, I'm, I'm on that camera, then. I do think it's like that. I've been, talk, I've been thinking of yeah, that camera. And, you know, it comes with an age of these, these things happen. So what do you reckon? How? I think we can comfortably... I think we're well on our way with this. I think we can comfortably put red or yellow, red for Wales and yellow for St. David's. Yeah, that's it. Great combinations. I think we're, we're nearly ready for adding a, a coat of shellac on this one. So we're not far off. Nice piece of wood. Where's this wood come from? Because it's uh, just so everybody it's knows. Uh, Cresselli, I think. Lo local piece of timber. So the, the it was the tree surgeon who, of course, in Wales we've had problems with ash dying back. And uh, another question, my friend. Uh, what are the hardest designs you've ever done? Oh, oh, now that's that's asking. Now that's really asking. Let's have a little think. We've done some complicated stuff. Um, we've done, what's the most complicated we've done? Oh, we've done all sorts of emblems. We've done everything from sort of kangaroos and dragons and daffodils, different flowers. Um, where was the one I was working on this earlier this morning? 
Um, I mean, things like seeds and links, it's not that they're really difficult to do, but they take us a lot of time. Um, what have we got there as well? Um, oh, we've done all sorts of different animals and things like that, but I really enjoy doing them. Things like garden birds, sparrows and stuff like that, robins, um, all sorts of different animals. The one difficult one is what was mentioned earlier, is people ask for an image of their dog or cat or something like that, and that's difficult to get it as they see their pet. Um, but yeah, we do animals, we've done hedgehogs, um, raccoons, you name it. Um, Oak leaves, yeah. Oh, um, yeah, the the one you did there, the some in our own family collection. Um, we'll we'll have to if we get a chance, we'll show some of it. Probably the most complex ones we've done are in our own family collection. We've got we got one love spoon. Do you want to bring that one across in the shape and size of a set of keys? Um, I don't know if you can just you can just see in the corner behind me there. That was the longest hand carved love spoon in the world. So that was three hundred hours of work. So that was a, a tricky one. Um, uh, what do we got there? It's the best flag in the world. Um, what do we got as well saying? Hi, after using the chisels, um, do you sand the inside of the pieces? If yes, how? No. Um, what would, with what kind of tool or sandpaper? Thanks. Right. Yeah, yeah, we do. We do sand after using the chisels. Oh, no, no. Hmm? oh. Sorry, I didn't show everybody that. There you go. That was a difficult one to do. Set of keys. So that's all one single solid block of wood. So that's the challenge. Yeah, we do sand. And I tell you what we do for sandpaper to save us money. We use the old sandpaper from our belt sander. So as, as the belt sander, basically you get to a stage where it's time to get a new belt for the belt sander. But it's still fine for hand sanding. And it lasts. A long time so we'll use and I'll demonstrate that now we'll sand it all over um, okay thanks short of time but people uh, need a bit of a job and a dragon no 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 not at all Marty um, yeah so um, that's what we do and I'll demonstrate a little bit of the sanding now so we just smooth everything off and shape it what are some of the other complex hey, I'll tell you what's what what we've got, I, I got one quick one I'll show people. Um, this, this will be coming up on the channel. Um, now these, we can't sell these. They're just a bit of fun. They're a challenge to carve. Uh, cartoon characters, there you go. So that's a challenge to carve. Um, but it, because it's got a look like the thing that you're carving. Um, so they're challenging. Uh, but you can't sell anything like that because you'd be in breach of copyright. So that's, that's something different. Um, everything and anything, really. Um, what have we got there? I've got to do a set. Simple little carvings like that can sometimes push you, is doing the clogs, because you've got to get the shape right. So that's going to be, that'll be one. We've done books. Um, we've done all sorts, haven't we? In fact, I mean, I, I, um, <laughs> that's, one, that's one of the important things, is, is, is not overcooking it. Oh yeah, you can go too far. Um, you can go too make far. Make sure that it's within your limits. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's good. It's good to stretch yourself sometimes, but sometimes you can. Uh, um, we have Pikachu work. Christmas Day. Yeah, yeah. Mexican flag is pretty epic too. The eagle. Yeah, absolutely. There's some great ones. Um, we did that one. We did the Sri Lankan lion. Remember doing that? We did a Persian lion. They were ch that was challenging because it's holding the, the sword. I tell you what it is with us is it's, it's quite often not so much. If somebody can provide an image of something, we can carve it. Uh, but I mean, and that's interesting on that front because people ask us to do like their football team logos. Again, we can do it, but we can't we can't do it because you're in breach of copyright. So you can't you can't do stuff like that. It's, it's, it's the copyright material of that particular um, that particular what would you call a company now? That particular sports team. Um, so yeah, you can't you can't just take copyright material in that way. Um, but we, we put, you know, when you see carvings like that, that's why we keep the cartoon carvings because um, well, there's, there's a nice you can make it for yourself 
because they call it fan art, but you can't sell it. Just show the front of that, okay? Yeah, there you go. Because it's, a... it's the words. It's the words, dude. Yeah, there you it's... go. You got, imagine the power of love. But, you know, it was done for the royal wedding, wasn't it? 2018. But it's, it's nice that we've got it on the wall there because... There's another great question here from Jasper. You can, you know, you can look at something like that. Um, you know, in amongst the day, imagine the power of love. It's, it's a nice sort of message. It's, um, uh, you know, and that's, that's one of the nice things I find about being here in the workshop. Um, you can look at a spoon just like that, and it simply says, imagine the power of love. Um, so it tells its story, doesn't it? And it does, and it, it, it sort of so stops let's, you. Let's show everyone, let's show everyone the ones, one next to it. This one here? Yeah, you got to show them that. I'll tell you now, that one there, Thomas Woodcarver's work, this one, okay? It's a, it's a bit dusty. A bit yeah. dusty. Um, 120 hours, three seeds inside the hands, one single solid block of wood. We just don't get time to do things like that because there's so much work involved in that. So yeah, you're talking about challenges, but a fantastic question. I really like this one. Is there any animal, because we carved a lot, and you're right, we've carved all sorts of animals. Is there any that we would have liked to have done that we haven't done? That's a good question. Well, and to be honest with you, it's interesting because we do a love spoon. These are the spoons you've got around the walls here. We do one love spoon to record each and every year. And so, um, I'm actually thinking, I was actually thinking of doing like a nature theme this year. I haven't said anything to Thomas Woodcarver about this. And um, one thing I was actually thinking of doing then would be to do some leaves. Um, I actually love carving um, birds. That's one of the ones I really enjoy. And I was thinking of possibly doing that yeah, then as a nature, right. as a nature theme is to carve all sorts of different birds into a nature themed design um, and possibly then animals, I thought would be really nice. Is there anything I'd like to have carved in terms of animals? It's a good question, that. Have we done horses? Um, Because this is the thing, see, yeah, because we do, mainly now, we only have time to do low relief carving. We've got that one. But, you, I mean, early. yeah, years ago, see, we used to do all the sort of more three-dimensional um, yeah. carvings, you know, the full... And that, that, I think... There you go. Again, for us, that's more... We just don't have the time to do it. Definitely more time consuming. Yeah, that's right. Well, I would, <coughs> I would say that it's more difficult as well. Carving solid type things. Oh like yeah, that. yeah, because it's gotta be, it's gotta be right, isn't it? You ha you can't just get it to look right. It's gotta be all the your dimensions have to be right, don't they? they you've got to get all your proportions right. So there's, there's more time involved in that process. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, hopefully now you start to see this taking shape. I'm going to push that in like so, so I've got a better surface to sand on. Could you do me one little favour? Yeah. Because um, I'm conscious of we're, especially on, oops, we're starting to get a bit low on the battery there as well. Oh, look at that one there. Oh yeah, there we are. There you go. Okay. The, it, There's with, another carbon. With the with this kind of thing, the solid. Do you thing. always sand with the grain? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Saying your work is amazing. No, Thomas Woodcarver did some beautiful carvings back in the day, and that's the thing is that it's those things that they they are they're very very time consuming, and and we don't we don't get the time to do stuff like that. Now. It's really a question of pushing yourself. You know, that's right. challenging different, you know, things that you think, oh, I'd like to do that, have a go with it. Yeah. And then you find, okay, <laughs> I'm sorry to come back to the financial situation, but then you say, hmm, yeah. It's um, great, but it's, it's business-wise, it's... Have to make a living. That's right. 
And because um, with stuff like that, as I said, we, we you know get in time to do the different things like that. It's it is very difficult for us. And that sort of thing, it it's then if you're going to do it commercially, you've then got to get the money back. Plus, okay. plus, you've got to. I tell you what I could do with is just a soft soft sandpaper. Um, it's what not it just that you've got to buy. What you've got wood? to buy the wood as as well. As Jasper saying wood coming into gorgeous. Yeah, piece like that. I'll be fine. Um, and and that is the thing is that it's it's not as simple. The wood itself for doing projects like that is more difficult for us to get hold of. Um, the, the computer has made life a lot easier though in the past day because you can get. You can, get, you can get images, yeah, on the computer of all, all sorts of different different things. Um, but there, it, it, it is, there's so many different things. Is, I'm still trying to think, is there an animal? I can't think of one specifically. There's lots of cartoon characters I still like to do. That's my favourite one. Is. When, I, when I first started, I, I couldn't draw particularly well. So you'd have to look through books to get images. Yes. Whereas today you've got the computer. I didn't get an image of virtually anything. Got the computer, so anything. It's a lot easier from that. When it comes to the horse thing, do you put the net? Ah, you beat me to it. You beat me to the, the you beat me to the puncher. Yeah, there we go. So what we got? We got a nail. Because I I realised that uh, the battery is running out soon. Oh dear. Um, could you get me? Could you get me a plug for? You know, Mum's charging plug. Right. Mum's charging plug. Mum's charging plug. We, we, we're, getting, we're getting warnings now that we're about to cut off. Don't worry, we'll... Uh, I got Thomas the woodcarver running to get the charging plug to stop us from cutting out. Yeah, um, when it comes... Right, we use... Yeah, we use that nail hook to, to, to sort of create those uh, indents. And... Um, oh, have you ever carved a hamster? No, haven't done a hamster. That'll be a new one. And again, what it is, we're tending to look for like a side-on image, something like that. Something like that we're looking for. Are you doing that one? Yeah, if you if you plug that into here we are, take that out, put that in there, and stick it in the see the plug down there. Oh, I'll leave it on the top then. Okay. Here we are. I'll leave that one for you. That'll stop us suddenly disappearing. Thank you, Gabby. And uh, Gabby's uh, in, in Romania and well worth checking out his channel. Um, yeah, no hamster. That would be one that we hadn't we hadn't done before. But again, what I would do. Is it being start charged now? Uh, is it being charged? Is it turned on? It's on. Yeah, that should be fine then. You reckon? It'll keep us on as long as possible. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, no, not one I've done before the hamster. So that would be one. That'd be a new one. And um, answering the other question there with the. Um, yeah, the nail holes we do with that one there. So yeah, I would look, what I would do with the hamster then, again, it's the same process. The first thing, I would look for an image that would be suitable. If you're gonna use that nail, I would, I would mark it with this way first to get the centers. Yeah, it's all right, don't worry. Just use the nail as well for the, um, oh yeah, Chris was asking, Gabby, if you can put up a link to your channel as well. Gabby's doing some wood turning and things like that, so well worth, well worth having a look. Anybody who's uh, interested in the woodworking, well worth checking out. Does some nice toy making demonstrations as well. So, and don't forget as well the Carver's channel as well and the wood, the wood burning warrior. All worth checking out and seeing what they're up to. So let's have a little look. Right, we've just sanded that all off there. I'm pretty happy with this. One thing I do is, and I'll have a check, we, I think we're holding in terms of battery now. I uh, blunt off the end, so it saves, saves you splitting the wood as easily. Uh, let's have a little look. I forgot to do these little cuts in here. One like that. One like that. Um, and there were a few requests for sharpening. A lot of it depends on how that battery holds up now. Uh, but if we miss that, we'll have to do it in another 
Okay, I mean, I can shout one on one of the cameras if you want me to. Yeah, and if we, we, we'll try and fit that in at the end. Right, so we've got those there and those there. The scroll saw one is off, isn't it? Camera. No, it's not off. Um, I think it's... Let's have a little look here. Right, so we just do a little bit more sanding. So what we do for this then, make sure that block is underneath. We mark one like so. And then another one, just like so. There we are, so we've got those there like so. We then put another one. Just pull this up a little bit higher. What I would say on that as well, Matt, if you want to have a check of Gabby's um, channel, if you put his his name in, if you put his name in on YouTube, um, it should it should come up. So put his full name in, and it'll come up. Here we are one there. One there. So you're just working out the positions of them all. And then we got one there. And then the last one just in the middle. Now, things that we've got to do, there's more work in terms of sanding and finishing. Uh, 22, 22, 23, uh, how many young people are getting into wood carving and are there many women who would carve? Right, now interesting ones on that front. Um, there, I would say that we definitely, you know, we definitely could do with more young, young people getting involved in, in wood carving. Um, yeah, it's something that here in the UK, it we needs. We don't really know what the figures are. Do we? we, we don't know. Um, and in terms of wood carving, there's no reason, there's, you know, no reason for it young, younger, older, uh, male, female. Now, there's no sort of, and especially the love spoon completely, um, there's no discrimination. There's, there's all sorts of um, brilliant. Thanks, Chris. That's great. Thank you for that. I'm sure Gabby uh, would appreciate it. Probably a little bit of, as well with the language barrier. Um, yeah. So um, it used to be a, a popular hobby in, in high society in Victorian um, in Victorian times with high society women. So yeah, there's, there's no sort of still a number of people making walking sticks. Yeah, it depends the the actual discipline, um, but there's no, plenty of room and potential for more people to be getting involved in in wood carving, um, and it doesn't you know they. I know of a, yeah, I know of a, a few, I'm aware of a few women who are doing wood carving as well. Um, you know, it, it is, it's just a great thing to get involved with. It, it's just having the opportunity to learn. But as I said, anyone, you're always welcome to, to visit us. And we always, we do what we can in terms of helping others to learn wood carving. The difficulty is that front, it, it, it's, the, it's the health and safety and the rules and regs. They're so restrictive. It's the first coat now. So yeah, what you should see now is as we put the first coat of shellac, you'll start to see, here we are, you'll see the transformation of the colour of the spoon. And sometimes what happens is little blemishes come out. I haven't sanded that bowl, so I'm not going to put any shellac in there for now, and I've got to sand it off. And that's another point, that was some it. people like the bowl carved off the chisel. Well, some people like their carvings left yeah. off the chisel and other people like to sand them. Um, so yeah. There's no right or wrong. So that's how, uh, that's how it, um, there's, there isn't a right or a wrong. It's however you want to do it, however you feel best to finishing it. And that's the thing, you can really, if you, you, you know, being artistic, being an artist, you can really express through the work that you're doing through the wood carving. We're plugged in, but we're still losing battery. 
Well, we're not turning that other camera off. A little bit more slowly, because it won't make any difference. Oh. <laughs> it's the, uh, it's the box, the live streaming box that's losing the battery. There we are. We'll have to turn that off, and then you know what that does? It turns the live stream off, isn't it? <laughs> there we are, right. What's well, everything showing low battery? My phone's doing it now. Okie dokie, we have got the first coat of shellac on that one. As you can see, it brings out the character and the color in the grain. And to finish off, we got 7%. You reckon you can do a quick demonstration of sharpening on 7%? And um, now you're welcome as well, Gabby. Um, yeah. Well, it's only the way we sharpen. I mean, there's, right. we, we got the if I we got the Tormek next door. I'll tell you what we do. I'll do the, I'll do the camera the and... Um, uh, it's amazing to the of the Yeah, absolutely. The shellac, it really brings out... It really does bring out the colour and the contrast in the grain. Okay, that camera is going to... That we got everything dying on us now. Um, let's have a little look. We'll go up to there. I'll go to my main... Is it that one? No, it's that one. Okay, bear with me. And we'll zoom in on Thomas the Woodcarver. So, we're working off this camera. If you have a look at the yellow box there, for me. Okay, do you see yourself on there? Yeah. Right, so what we got, we got Thomas the Woodcarver. If you just explain the process. Well, I'm, I'm sharpening the back of the gouge. So what you do, you sharpen. Now I always recommend, personally, I always recommend put the put it in a cloth, because if you do slip, if you do slip, Thomas Woodcarver's been doing that for over 50 years, so he tends to not worry about slipping too much. But if you do slip, you're gonna catch your hand. So I, I recommend putting the stone. <laughs> you do the other way around. I always hold the stone, because if you slip, you can go with your hand. So I hold the stone in a cloth. That's it. So if you slip, it'll go into the cloth as opposed to going in your hand. So this is the way not to do it, right. folks, yeah. Now, no, I'll tell you what I do. Yeah. Tell you what, because you're still not doing it. I'll show everybody afterwards that little bit of it. So you basically, you sharpen on the external angle. If I show, if I show everyone what I do, okay, it's just for everybody to see. I hold it in a cloth with my hand underneath. The reason I do that is if you do slip, Go on in. You slip into the cloth. Go on in. There you go. It's just, a, it's only a little point just to potentially say, there we are, a but little accident. I'm going, the, I'm going the wrong way around now. You do it the way, hold it down hand you want, it's just to show people that You're it like, is slip. It's taken 50 years and my son has confused me so much I don't know how to sharpen the blinking gouge. Oh dear me. Right, so basically what he's doing, you rock the gouge from side to side and you get in a little burr on the inside, so you'll get a little rough edge on the inside. Which I'm now taking off. And then One, you take it off two, using the slip flat stone. On there. Okay, yeah. so that's the process that we go through, just to sharpen a gouge. And it's, it's as simple as that. And then you can get a leather strop, or you can use a piece of material, and you can, you can just polish the metal, polish it up, but what I would say, there are a couple of videos on our channel that specifically focus on the sharpening. So if you want to know about the sharpening, check those out because it goes through how we use a tall neck and it goes through how we use a stone. And Dave wouldn't know about this, but what I'm actually doing, folks, I'm drawing the molecules now oh, right to the surface, I am, you see. Yeah. Yeah, we have. Chris has just said this is comedy gold. <laughs> Is Laurel and Hardy do wood carving? Oh, I can see those molecules coming right to the surface. I have to be careful I don't sharpen it too much in case he cuts his finger on it, you see, folks. There you go. There you go. And oh, that's how okay. we do the, the sharpening. Oh, what a job. Right, oh. here we go. To finish off, oh. we will go... I'll redo the camera two seconds for every... There you go, you're in, you're in full shot now, Thomas Woodcarver. Oh, you see? Look at that. Oh. When he has a good idea, what happens, what happens when you have a good idea? It's as sharp as mustard now, it is. Oh, what a job. I thought it was as keen as mustard. Oh, it's as keen as mustard. There we are then. Show everybody now, what happens when you get a good idea? Oh, dear me. Right, so we're going to go to the next one. Oh, 
Here we are. Oh, look at that, Dave. Oh, dear me. And that's how you do it. But yeah, check out that video if you're, you're interested in the shark, and then check out that video. Um, what, do you know what happens when you get a good idea? What happens when I get a good idea, Dave? Um, you, 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 get, you get a light up there, do you? What? How's that work? We, we light up. There you go. That's, oh, look at that. You know when Thomas, Thomas Wood oh. when he's had a good idea, it, it, he gets a light bulb moment, so. It's a light bulb um, moment. Right, we've got one more question here. Uh, oh no, two more. Uh, what stone is that? An oil stone. It's a slip stone it is, but what type of stone would it be? And it's, it's nothing special. It's, you, can, it's, you can find them. Yeah, like a... What do you call it? Carbon on them? Or like, it could even be an Indian one for Indian all I know. Yeah, it's, it's nothing yeah. special. The yeah. main system we use is the... Um, um, is the main one that we use is... This is light is distracting me now. Uh, the main one that we use is actually the Tormek. How do you, how do you turn that? Yeah. Um, and that's the main sort of system that we use for sharks. Yeah, which we will do if... Um, and, and that, no, but they, check out the videos. There are demonstrations that we've done of that, but we can demonstrate it in another live stream. So that was the one. Um, you're tipping along uh, the edge and testing with your finger. Yeah, yeah, he does. He does do that. He tests it with his hand. He does, he does. It's a case of watch those videos, because in the videos, all the things that he shouldn't do... I've stopped him in the middle of filming and said, no, don't do that because you're not supposed to do it like that. You see him, he'll strop the gouge on his trousers and he'll rip his trousers and all sorts. So yeah, really it's... Are. Rip trousers, you folks. You strop it on rip, his trousers. Um, rip trousers. Can you see those rip trousers? I've missed this one here from Jasper. Um, rip trousers. Right. But is the burr a build-up, like the sharpening of a pencil? Yeah, it's a rough edge. What happens, you get a rough edge on the inside of the cutting yeah. blade. When you rub, and then when you, you rub, take that rough edge off. When you rub your thumb or finger down there. And you see our, our camera there you, is in shot. You can't feel, which one is it? No, there's this one, it's this one. Where am I? Right, so there. When I rub my thumb down there, it's, it's, it's completely smooth. After you've sharpened it, you can just feel what we call a burr. And it's a roughness. And so you have to remove that burr, and that's why I only ever do this once or twice. Yeah. Get the dust off there. And you keep it flat, flat. And then you go one, because two. If you don't have it flat, you don't want to do You're actually that. blunting where you've sharpened. Don't do that to take the burr off. Keep it flat. Yeah, because if you angle it back, you're blunting it. You're taking the sharpness off. Flatten the edge, take it off, and then stop it on a piece of material. Your the old carpenters used to do this, folks. On their hands. They used yeah. to do that. Yeah. But I don't advise it because no. um, yeah. what happens? You still have some oil yeah. and it could get in the skin. Yeah. And, and that, you know. Well, I have a problem where. This one thing. My, whenever I'm carving, my hands end up as black. It's just oily skin. Um, so that's what happened. But there we are. I'm glad you've all enjoyed. Uh, it's great. We really appreciate that you've uh, joined us and that you stayed with us. Any other questions, get them in the comments section. We, as always, have an uploads on Wednesday and a short on a, a Friday. Uh, and I'm just thinking as well, yeah, anybody as well, Mark or anybody, um, Chris and Jasper and any, anybody like that who's uh, interested in what's going on here um, and you want to see the carving, you, you've got any questions, either put them in YouTube, but also you can, you can come to the workshop. Everybody else, if you're in the US, I know it's, not as easy to come to the workshop, but yeah, any questions, get them into us. And finishing off, as I said, you can see these then, these are our family collection of spoons, and that's what we do. We add one each year, and they are some of the more complex designs. But there we are. Hope you all have a great week. Well done, Jasper, as well to the college. Fantastic idea doing a competition like that. Brilliant idea. I, I hope it's something you keep going. Um, thank you for involving us. And we get that finished off. Thank you all. Have a great week. Good all the best. Now. All the best.